Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be my Q3 and Q4 portfolio update. So in this series, what I do, this in reality, like I mentioned before, this is more a personal video, video that I like to do just to kind of like justify why I made certain moves, why did I do them, what did I move, where's my sentiment at, where's my head at, right? What am I looking at, what am I not looking at, and kind of just how to prepare for this bull market, right? Which we are, if you weren't convinced before, I'm pretty sure you are now, right? So we'll talk about it, we'll give our thoughts, talk about what I've purchased, what I haven't purchased, and kind of even go through the list of coins that I do currently own and as to why I'm holding them, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get right to this thing. So again, this is more of a personal video. I like doing these things quarterly just to kind of be able to reflect, look back in time and see where my head was at, okay? None of this stuff is going to be financial advice. And as a matter of fact, a lot of it's not going to be good advice, okay? This is just literally the way I see the market, the way I'm handling this potential bull market here, okay? So some of the coins I'm into, some of them may flop, some of them may do well. But one thing I do want to stress is because of where, where we are at in this current timeline, you do definitely want to start making your final kind of preparations, decisions, what do you want to have in your portfolio, what you don't, because if we go by the traditional cycle, we're at the point now where we're arguably less than 12 months from the potential peak if it repeats, right? At any given time, though, anything can happen. It's possible that we peak early. Maybe we peak sometime in Q1, Q2. Maybe we don't. Maybe it just follows the cycle and it's sometime Q3, Q4 of this coming year. But regardless, you want to be in place now. You want to kind of make your bets. There is still a lot of opportunity. Yes, Bitcoin has ran like freaking crazy. A lot of the alts still have not. Not all of them, but quite a few of them, right? There are certain ones that have ran, ran up just pretty much as aggressively as Bitcoin, but many have not, right? So there's still plenty of opportunity. And it's hard, bros. It's hard because none of us have that crystal ball. We don't know which one in the top 50 is going to do that 10, 15, 20, 30x. We don't know, right? All we can do is kind of look at the market, kind of trust our guts, see what we feel, use these things. Like a thing I recommend a lot is to actually use these coins, like go in that ecosystem, see how easy it is to use. Is it difficult? Does it suck? Like I know some ecosystems I've gone into horrible and because of that i would never invest into good example for me polka dot mess with manta there was a version of manta that was on, on dot horrible horrible ui horrible like being like it was just trash especially in comparison to pretty much anything else so because of that like immediately next like for me that was a big thing with solana that's why we got into solana my big narrative from the beginning was adoption was going to be a big thing. Like, what is it? What is ideally easy to use, easy to navigate? And for me, a big clear one was just Solana. Like, they work big time on their GUIs, their user interfaces. They make everything seamless. They make everything easy to use. And that, to me, is why we were so bullish on it, right? And right now, that's kind of been panning out. But let's get uh, to these prices, though. BTC... It says November 21st. We are at 97,000. It did hit 98,000. We are potentially any time away from 100K, right? Which is potentially a big sell wall, though. A lot of people are expecting it to get rejected at that point. Who freaking knows? Regardless, the market is bullish. Even if it struggles for a little bit to get beyond 100K or maybe it goes through it like butter, we don't know. Again, my time frame is more a longer term. Okay, but this is big news. We've gone up immensely this past month. It's just insane. Like for BTC to go up 45% in 30 days, it's insane, right? And things are kind of just playing out to the previous cycles, right? We go back to 2020. When was the timeline when it started jumping up? Around the same time frame, okay? Around the end of October, beginning of November, which what is... Potentially, the main reason is the, the election, right? Pretty much right after. You can see here in 2020, it popped. And then you can see here now, it popped, right? There's a lot more things going on this time, though, between the ETFs, the potential strategic reserve for the U.S., which is going to have, which is, what's that's going to do? It's going to have all these other nation states, countries, 
begin to want to FOMO in, right? Even here locally in the U.S., we're having states now starting past legislation in order to start their own reserve, right? It's going to be a race at this point, okay? And it's only going to accelerate things. So there's a lot of thought process here with that also, right? One thing is that typically when does an alt season start, right? Which isn't just one time. It usually sometimes will happen multiple times, but typically it's people taking profits from Bitcoin. One expectation is that once we hit that like 9,900K range, a lot of people aren't even going to mess with it. They're going to take profits at 99 and potentially go into alts. Maybe they wait a little bit longer. Maybe they went until Q1, Q2. Kind of what's different this time, though, is what is the ETFs and these nation states and people creating reserves, putting it on the balance book and these companies treasuries. So if that's the case and that's what a lot of this price action is, they're not going to be selling into alts, right? These people are going to be holding at this time. So there's a lot of like things you got to consider here that it may not repeat just the same as before, specifically with the alts. We've kind of already seen that. Right, kind of what's super unique this time also is the fact that a lot of the alts have ran along with it, right? Even for us in the mining world, freaking Doge, okay, it ran up extremely aggressively. Another example of one that's ran super, super hard is Solana, okay? It's currently at $254. It's within $6,000 of its previous all-time high, okay? This is one of these alts that has just had its own freaking thing it didn't wait for the alt season it's doing its own thing and it has been doing it since the bottom i mean look how crazy this chart is like if you buy any time during the fud times and anytime there's this long stretch of it being around 20 bucks you're doing extremely well okay so the tricky part here now is i mean look at the all-time chart okay and then look at the market cap this is where it goes really bananas Okay, previous all-time high market cap wise, about 75 billion. We're currently already at 120 billion. Okay, so this is one that if you're interested, like oh, I'm bullish now, Solana. It depends on your strategies. I personally would not be buying anything. Like it has to be for me again. I stacked a bunch when it was ideally. I'd have to go below 110, 100 bucks for me to consider. Even potentially saying there's just so many other coins that have not ran yet. Okay, so kind of to each their own. This is why you have to make those strategies. Make goal amounts. Like you can have an overall amount. Like I'm to the point now where I have an overall goal of what I want to hit for this bull market's entirety. Okay, and then I have a breakdown of every single coin. How much I have. What is the goal amount? Like it's it's complicated, right? But it's been something that we have worked on this whole bear market right it's been two years of going up and down and a lot of it for me is just a lot of it's been balancing right with solana being so high yes i have sold some yes i have taken profits and not necessarily to keep as cash but it's been part of the reasons to expand hardware wise either purchase hardware or purchase other coins that i feel have a lot more potential okay so I am down to a certain amount. I'm not going to go below that amount, right? Again, I have targets for every single coin. And there's certain coins that even though I'm mining them, I have the amount or actually have an excess of what I want to actually hold, right? In that case, I'm kind of selling those into other coins that I think have more potential or that I want to accrue more, right? A lot of it's a big balancing game, especially for those of you who are miners or stakers, or you're into DeFi, you're in a position where you're constantly accruing more coins, right? If you're a person who's bot only, then you're kind of just fix where you're at. I'm sure, obviously, it's a good idea to have these things staked, staked natively, like your soul, which I know a lot of people are just now getting into, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I have soul that's still staked from freaking last cycle, right? So you want to, like, take advantage of those revenue streams. So, again, once I hit those goals, it's like, okay, I have this amount. I'm good with that amount. Like I almost have too much and I don't want to diversify into others, which is something I've had to do with other coins. Also, in certain coins that maybe <sighs> the position size grew a ton because the coin appreciated so much, but it wasn't necessarily so bullish on it, right? So a good example for me, what I did on this run was CKB. With Nervos, it's one that because it ran up so much, it took over a huge chunk of my portfolio. And at one point was like my number two coin as far as size wise, right? And although I'm bullish on it, which is the reason we've been mining and holding it, 
and there's a lot of other coins that I was more bullish on it. So I did take profits there. Recently, it did go up to right under two cents. Didn't take profit as many profits as I would have liked in the prior run, but it did go up high enough for me to take some, reduce that position, and add uh, other positions in. Right, so it's kind of a certain game there, but again, I do have that fixed amount that I want, and then we'll go from there. And then once I fill in these positions that I have, because again, I have goal amounts of every coin, once I hit that goal amount, then it's on to the next. So I either add another one or I reassess like, oh, you know what? This one feels more undervalued. I'm going to add another goal amount. So instead of having 80 of this coin, maybe it'll get bump bumped up to my goal is now 95 or 100 of that coin. Right. And that's one thing like <laughs> I like nice flat numbers. I don't like having like random numbers of things like for me it's just the way I do it. Right. Everybody's going to have their thing on there. Um, let's go to some of the movements I did, which again, I don't really like selling positions. I don't like moving coins too much, like coins that I'm bullish on. I'm usually bullish on for a reason. Something kind of drastic has to happen or a general mind shift in the purpose of that coin has changed. Okay. So one big change I did make, and it was kind of a hard one because this is one that I have been accruing aggressively during this bear market. Right. And this is one thing that is going to be hard and it's kind of not getting attached to some of these things. Right. So especially if you're a person like me, if you've been accruing these past two years, there are certain coins that you've been following aggressively, buying on the dips, buying them aggressively early. Near is one for me that we bought aggressively early on, especially when it was extremely, extremely cheap, when it was down here in this dollar range for a long time. That's when we accrued the bulk of it. So the main reason I ended up selling actually this whole position was I'm just too heavy in my top 50 coins. Okay, I'll we'll go through my portfolio allocations here towards the end. But because of how much Solana grew, AVAX grew, which are a big chunk of my allocations, and with Caspa going up as much as it did, being a top 30 coin, I was almost too heavy in those top 50 coins. Again, this portfolio is very specific to this bull market. And it is a more, it's like a safe degen play. So I wanted more of a mix between top 50 coins, maybe a couple 50 to 100, and a lot on the degen side, right? Not a lot, but at least, well, we'll talk about it at the end, but more there. Felt like I was a little bit too heavy in these top 20 coins, which realistically just aren't going to have as much potential, okay, as far as going up massively. Like near at this point, maybe it can, it can do anywhere from a 5 to 8x. Again, everybody, you're going to have to come up with your own price predictions and all that good stuff. But if we look at it based on the market cap, previous all-time high market cap wise was about $12 billion. It's currently even right now in this dip about $7.5 billion already. Okay, so even if it doubles it from there, easy math, it'd be a 3x from here. Could it do 20, 25, 30 bucks? Sure. But I think there's a lot of other coins that I do have fairly high faith in that could do potentially more. Okay, or also on the same front, there are also other pretty big coins that I have more faith in will do that like 3 to 5 to 6x. Okay, so I'd rather consolidate those into that. Like for me, Solana was obviously a good winner. But it's not something I would expect more than a 2x. Realistically, my target from here is like maybe a 2.5x. So that's why I wouldn't be putting much more into it. So like the one that I did put in quite a bit more into was AVAX. And just because it kind of has similar, I mean, it pumped a little bit here recently. But at the time when I did the swap, it's had similar anywhere from like 3 to 6 to 7x vibes. And I was just more bullish on AVAX as a whole just because of the gaming segment and what they're doing. Okay, so I did kind of consolidate that position, and that was a reason for that. Some of the other big moves is I did exit my position out of big time completely and kind of under the same guise, right? For the gaming coins, there's just so many other coins that have so much more upside. Okay, this one, still a small market cap relatively. It's $175 million, but there's a bunch of others that I feel will do potentially fairly well and are under like $50 million market caps. Okay, so that was the reason here. I would definitely revisit this one just because, again, we got a quick 3x on this one. So this one did go down to $0.06 cents back in like August, September. 
when it did a 3x we sold and ideally realistically what i was kind of hoping for was a release of the guns token for any guys following any of the gaming ventures if you've heard of the game off the grid that is going to be their native token they for unfortunately haven't launched yet and at this point because of how hyped it is realistically it's probably going to be a very high valuation so I may not even get in so that's why i also kind of decided to put a little bit more into avax to kind of get some exposure through that way but part of the mindset here was to sell this and then I also dumped my whole shrapnel bag just because some of unfortunate events. This is another one we have been stacking for the past like six months or so on dips or whatever. So they have a active lawsuit going on, which I'm not a fan of any uncertainty, right? Especially the extent of this lawsuit is uh, just not a fan of that. So recently when it did in the same time frame when uh, the big time dip happened, this guy dipped under two cents. So it was like 0.19, I think, when we got in. So I did actually add a little bit more down there. And then when it did go up to about four or five, I sold it at four and a half. It did reach actually higher than that. But once it reached that point between what I had already accrued and the dip and what that went up, I pretty much just broke even on this. So I didn't even make profit. At that point, it's just I don't want any uncertainty. So I wanted to exit out. Also, the fact that this is the genre that this game is in. It's more of a realistic type shooter. Very similar to Off the Grid. To me, it's just there's going to be a clear winner in Off the Grid. Right? So any of those that are in the same style genre of game, as far as being like a Call of Duty type game, there's going to be different segments for like an Overwatch or those kinds of style games, but specifically for an extremely similar type game, Off the Grid is going to take all the hype of this thing, and it already kind of has. Like right now, they just open it again for people who have the NFTs to kind of play for a week, and it's getting zero traction. Why? Because it's all on Off the Grid, right? So the hard part with these gaming tokens is that it's only going to make sense if there's extreme upside potential and you think it'll do okay, or if it's going to be the clear winner in that segment. So for me, any of the more realistic first-person shooters is going to be off the grid, right? So at this point, I don't want to hold any of these because if they don't do too well, if they kind of flop, the coin price is going to flop, right? So the, that's kind of the advantage with picking more ecosystem or infrastructure-related gaming coins because you'll kind of get exposure of any of the one that, that does pop. If you invest into the, any of the individual games, it gets trickier. So specifically for this one, it's the lawsuit and off the grid kind of killing it for me with this guy. And that was pretty much it for these moves and essentially allocated the funds from, again, the plan was for big time and shrapnel for hoping for that, you know, guns token release. It didn't come to fruition. So ended up just dumping it into AVAX. And then part of the near or a big chunk of the near uh, funding went into Alephium actually. So I did buy another bag and that was part of that. So now I have pretty good exposure on that one. Um, other coins I had been looking at that came out recently, and this is another one where you have to look at the tokenomics and look at everything going on in the coin, was Peak. So this is a layer one specifically for Deepin. As you guys know, that's going to be a big focus for me this year. So seeing one that's dedicated specifically to Deepin, and then there's been some projects that have been going from Solana to Peak. Very interesting. Um... So specifically now, because of how much it's dumped since it launched, it launched at 37 cents. There was a pre-sale of this thing a few months ago, somewhere between like the 7 to 9 cent range. So those of the people who dumped up here made out pretty well. Even at its current price, it's about a 3x. So this one, uh, looking into it further though, right? Because initially it's like, oh, what is going to be the appeal for the D-pins? Like, what is the main appeal? Like, yes, it's Target for that. And that's what they're advertising. And that's what they're going to promote. But specifically, like tokenomics wise, speed wise, like what is it that is going to differentiate itself from others? Um, so immediately when we look at the tokenomics, I uh, lost all interest in this thing extremely quickly. Okay, so not even the Genesis launch, it's whatever, like a lot of these coins. Yes, I know a lot of people like fair launch and all this. Realistically, especially with these, they're more like businesses, right? They have to have allocations for different things. I don't even mind that part. Uh, what's getting me is the unlock. So there is a lot of VC money in here, which is fine. But it's a very aggressive monthly unlock every single month. 
Okay, you can see I have Genesis, month zero. This is what, what was unlocked. The percentages are up here. And then every single month, right, all the way down uh, the first two months, it's almost 40 million peak are getting unlocked. The regular inflation is 12.25. So you can see there's a significant increase there. By month three, it goes up to 75 million. Month four, another 75. Month five, another 75. Month six, 73. And then month seven, 131 million. And then 100 million, 100 million. Like it's... Again, we have 12 months left in this bull market, right? So the unlocks and the inflation is pretty ridiculous. Like you can already see by month seven, we're going from 377 as a, your circuit and supply up to nearly a freaking billion, right? And a lot of it is just the damn unlocks. Okay, so you're going to have a lot of potential sell pressure all the way through and just not a fan right so that kind of definitely killed it for me because it's aggressive all the way down right so it's not until month 26 when it goes down to 42 million again we're going to be deep deep balls deep in the bear market by then so this one kind of lost all interest in right that doesn't mean it won't pump that doesn't mean it can't have a good run because we have seen other coins that had horrible horrible tokenomics still took off so there still is that possibility there but realistically for me, with so many other coins potentially having so much more upside, this one kind of lost its appeal real quick. Okay. And then a big change also was just going deeper into a lot of the deep end projects, right? So not only just picking up the miners for them, but also just adding them, adding positions into them, right? So this is why even on the hobby side or even like on the money side, like I have to be into the project for me to want to mine it, for me to participate in it. I have to actually be legitimately bullish on the project, right? Otherwise I lose interest like that, right? So, and that's for me, at least where the hobby side still comes in, right? Like, and that's what keeps it fun. That's what keeps it going. And it's even better if you just believe in the project, right? Which that's why damn near everything I'm mining or accruing I actually believe will do well. It's not just, oh, oh, this miner does X amount of money and it'll make this amount. Not only do I think it'll do that, but I'm also very bullish on the coin and I think that coin will appreciate quite a bit, right? Which makes it that much more appealing. So I did, I have been DCAing a bit into Geode, which is one, again, the main reason here, things are tiny, tiny market caps, right? They are doing big things. They're getting VC money, so they're getting funding and they're doing things. Rank number 767, only $50 million market cap. Potential huge upside here, right? So I know a lot of people are focused on meme coins and such, but it's like, bro, these are starting market caps of a lot of these memes, right? Another one is like Demo, for example. Similar thing, it's going to be a leader in this niche. $45 million market cap. A lot of potential upside, okay? Even if it just reaches bear market highs, which I think it'll meet or exceed that, a lot of appeal here, not just in getting the device, but also adding to that position by DCAing right now where these prices are low. Obviously, it was better a little while ago when it was like 11 cents when before this like 50% pump, but still, it's you have to look at the long term. And that's one thing that I'm definitely kind of like struggling with and I've been preparing myself for it is just looking at the prices and looking at these pumps like a lot of times it's like oh man it just went up 50 percent uh no i'm over it there's still a lot of upside with these coins right so even i struggle with that like a lot of times i see that or even like recently right now with a lot of these script asics we see this these inc these increases in these prices it's like 30 40 percent or whatever and it's like no hell no i'm not touching that but you still have to calculate and look long-term wise, like still doesn't make sense, right? And it's kind of the same thing here because sometimes we're going to see these crazy candles out of nowhere, especially with these smaller market cap coins. It can be 16 cents right now and go up to 25, 30 cents like that. And it's crazy because there still may be upside to potentially continue DC into still, right? So this is where the mindset needs to change, where it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to buy that 50% pump because it'll retrace for sure, right? Like two years ago, these past two years in the bear market, very good possibility. Now, there's also a very equal possibility that in three months, this thing can be 50 cents. It can be 60 cents. It can, it can do that, right? We're at that mania point now. So you have to be able to flip that 
that mentality into the different coins. Again, you have to do your own research, see what niche you're into. But obviously, if you're into that segment, you're going to see value in these coins, right? Again, I've been following deep in things very closely, this whole bear market, but specifically more so now because that's where a lot of the focus will be. But again, for the GPU miners, looking into the GPU coins, looking when it's a good time to buy. Like, for example, we did that video on specifically GPU mining coins with like Radiance and Iron and Nexa. Most of those recently just did a 50% pump like not too long after that video, right? And it's again, if you're in those communities, if you're in those segments, you're gonna be able to kind of see those. Like what value does it provide? Is the community still there? You're gonna be able to see those and that's what's gonna make you bullish on those things. Or, and the use case for the bigger cap coins is actually participating in those ecosystems. Like, why do people like Solana so much? Why do people like AVAX so much? How is the DeFi on there? How are the apps? Are there a lot of dApps on there? Is there a lot of TVL on there? Is there a lot of activity, new users, wallet activity? All that kind of good stuff, right? And that's what makes me bullish is just going with that, right? Looking at metrics that matter to you that you think will do well, okay? Trust your gut. Trust what you think will do well. Trust what the normies will think. Right. So like recently, Demo, they did this thing with changing their their wallet structure, which a lot of people are pissed doing like the pass key and email thing. But to me, uh, bullish because this is going to get normal. It's just increasing adoption. Right. Again, that's a big catalyst of why we're so bullish on like Solana from the get go. It's just easy, seamless integration. And that's what made me extremely bullish with like off the grid, how it's extremely seamless. A lot of people playing that game don't even know they have a damn crypto wallet. They have a bunch of NFTs in that wallet, right? That's kind of the point of things, right? And that's where I like to find value. Um, so as far as positions go, so I'll put a list of every coin I have, right? So I'm not going to put the actual position number, but you can see the percentage as far as allocation goes, okay? So you can see the first half, number one is CASPA. It's currently 29% of the portfolio. And before we even fully get started, uh, one huge thing you're going to notice and one huge thing, and you guys who are newer, I'd recommend have your stash of BTC. BTC is not going to be listed here. For me, reason it's not listed here is that this specific allocation, everything I'm doing right now is specific to this bear market. Out of all these coins we talk about, a lot of these things we're bullish on, the only coin we're bullish on beyond this bull market is bitcoin okay that's literally the only one i have faith in that'll be around not just next bull market but potentially the one after so for example for me that is no longer one of these like type of portfolios for a cycle okay that is now to the point where for me at least it's a monthly dca no matter what just like traditional stocks just like your traditional investments if you have your iras any of your TradFi stuff, that to me, that's where Bitcoin is at now. So regardless of price, it's just getting DCA'd into. And that's one I'm not heavily focusing on. Like, oh man, it's 100K. It's almost for the Bitcoin position. It's not about this cycle. It's not about the next cycle. As a matter of fact, it might be the cycle after that, right? To me, it's borderline inevitable that it's going to eventually reach half a million, 750,000, potentially a million sometime within these next couple of cycles right so that to me is a long-term hold so if you don't have that mentality that's never a bad one to hold right so that's why you're not going to see here but this is going to be all alts right so caspa is 29 percent of the bag and that's after reducing a good amount right again if you guys kind of need the previous ones it when it ballooned like crazy, it literally took over the portfolio. At one point, it was like 60, almost 70% of the portfolio, which was ridiculous. And uh, number two is Solana. Solana is about 19% of the portfolio. And the same thing, that's after reducing a good chunk, kind of just spreading the wealth. Okay, so when a lot of people rebalance their portfolios, it's kind of what they're doing. Because they may start out as only a small location. Like, for example, Caspa at one point was not even a percent of the portfolio. And then because of how much it ran up, it took over the damn thing. So that's what a lot of people tend to do is quarterly or whatever time frame they want, they kind of rebound things as things pump, right? This thing pumps 10X, 
but this other coin that I think will do well has only done like a 2x. I'm going to probably redistribute into some of that coin, right? So it's it's all a game. I would highly recommend not doing too much of that, though. Not much moving around. Kind of set goal amounts. And keep those figures, okay? You can see number three now. That was a lithium. Again, we did make a hefty buy. If you guys caught that post, we did it last week, and in the week it's gone up about 35%. Right, so it was good timing there. It didn't reach that sub dollar that we wanted, but again, that's one that had taken profits of some of the other coins, and it's one that I am bullish on. Right, so it's not I'm not just saying it just to say it, or like when I bought those things, I'm legitimately super bullish on Alephium and I think it will do well. How well, we don't know, right? That's definitely a high risk play considering how much of the portfolio it is. But for me, I'm confident at worst, it struggles, it does a three to five X from here. At best though, and then my expectation is around potentially a 10, maybe more X, right? So who knows, maybe a rug, something happens, they have an exploit, does worse. That's just my perspective on it. AVAX is number four at 10%. CKB is down to 8%. This one, this is one that was quite a bit higher, but again, I did reduce that position and allocate it into some of the smaller cap coins. Kadena is at 5.1%, and this is, I'm at the position where I want to be at with KDA. Okay, so even though I'm still mining it, once... It has a reasonable pump and maybe another coin has it pumped. I will be converting those coins into those other coins because, again, I already have the amount that I want allocated for it. Star Atlas is another gaming one, and this is one that has done extremely well. We talked about it probably the last portfolio update video we did or one of the others where we're talking about what was going on with it and why it was so undervalued. Essentially, it was because of the FTX bankruptcy. It was one that was being foresold for a very long period of time. Okay, once it was towards the end of that force selling, which we were able to track, that's when I bought in a good position. And it's done well, right? It's done a 2x since then, and it's been holding it. Okay. Helium Mobile and HNT. I just didn't mention this. This is actually another reason we did want to get rid of that near because it looks like they're going to get rid of the mobile token, which was a high risk, high reward play. And then HNT was a bigger cap coin. I think it's regular like number 60. That hopefully will do well, but may not have as much potential, obviously, as some of the smaller cap coins. So this is one I do have faith in. I am holding all of it. I have sold some, but I'm holding a big chunk of it. But this is now another like top 50 coin that's going to be in the portfolio. Again, I don't want to be too heavy in these like top 50, top 100 coins. Okay, so that was another reason to get rid of the near, as I do feel that there possibly will be more potential with HNT anyway versus near just because of the market cap size. And then pretty much from here on down, it's all the more spec plays, right, which has been a big thing. And these are all just like literally 1% of the portfolio. Nothing big, but a lot of these coins have the potential to do anywhere from a 3 to 5x on the horrible side, maybe some will rug, but then also have the potential for that 10, 15, 20x. Which one will do that extent? No idea. Will any of them do it? No idea. But they're coins that I follow that I think will do well. So that was the first one. We have Geonet, Iron, Handshake, which actually this is one that I have... <laughs> very little faith in now not just because of the price action right price action can be horrible but you could still be confident in the project if everything else kind of remains so very rough price action very little community sentiment everything is pretty much on the low who knows at this point i'm just gonna hold it we'll see what it does but this is one that i would definitely because of everything going on the lack of development everything i just do not have a ton of faith in. Demo is another 1.9%. Radiant, we did buy back in. We did buy our million back in at like a fraction of what we sold it at because of all the <laughs> entity FUD, but it is one that just, again, does have extreme potential. Nine Heroes, which is on the gaming front. This is a coin that's under a $10 million market cap. If any of you guys played it in any of the things, pretty solid game. Even if it does somewhat mediocre, a $100 million market cap to me is extremely feasible. Natix, this one was closer to 1%. This one had a 
pretty big drop recently. May add a little bit more just to get it back up to that 1%. And then Hive Mapper down here at the bottom, which is again is another one that has good upside. And then this is where part of the rebalancing comes into play. So like as some of these dip, like for example, the goal for the, almost all of these is to be at 1%, somewhere in that range. So for example, Natix dropping this much, it makes it extremely enticing to pick up a little bit more to get it back up to that 1%. If there's a good dip, like right now it's down to that amount because it's a pretty good size dip right now. It's actually lower than our initial buy-in. So that's one I would probably add a little bit more. Same thing potentially here, same thing here, just to get them to that 1%. And then as things move along, maybe one of them pops off before the others, right? Maybe Demo, because everything going on with the rebrand, this one pops off. Well, actually, this one's going to be a long-term hold, so that one I wouldn't. Um, but maybe like Nyan would be on the chopping block, just because, again, it's not the leader in the space, right? So it's not going to be the best blockchain game. Can it do well if it does, like something happens, something super bullish, does a 5x, I would probably roll that 5x into like Natix or into Demo potentially, like into something else, right? Because there's certain ones of these that I think will do extremely well and others I just purchase because opportunities there, right? So like Natix, for example, it's one, it's another opportunity one just because the market cap, I believe, is still under 10 million or it should be now because it's retraced quite a bit. Uh, just a lot of upside. It's a competitor to Hive Mapper. Again, for these mapping devices, Hive Mapper is going to be the leader in the space, right? Much bigger market cap already, though, and it's going to reflect that. But to me, it's not the the leader in that space, right? Which is what I want to head more towards. But again, opportunity is opportunity. Same thing with kind of Radiant. Do I think they're going to do something like Haspa? No way, Jose, but a lot of potential upside here, right? So it's just... Different things, guys, and this is a lot of consolidation, actually. So it's down to about 20 coins, which to me is the max. Realistically, I would really, I was trying at one point get it down to 10, but that was pretty much impossible, right? There's a lot of coins I'm bullish on. A lot of coins like these little one percenters that just have a lot of potential, right? And if anything, so we'll see where we go from here. But realistically, it's going to be looking for more undervalued things. Like realistically, I'm going to continue to mine Caspa. Whatever I mine is going to just get continue to add there. So that's that. Solana, I haven't added any in a long time, right? And again, for me, we got in the bulk of our purchases was like at 10 bucks. I think our average buy-in is somewhere like between 15 and 17 bucks. So again, the thought of buying anything over $100 is already pretty extreme. So for me, I'm not adding there. Alephium, I'm very close to my target amount. I wanted to ideally get it by mining it. I may just buy the rest, but this one is pretty much where I want it to be at. AVAX, I actually still want to get a little bit more for this one to me. Very high confidence play. I think it's still a little bit undervalued. Not so much at 35 bucks. I wish I would have bought more recently when it was at 22. I was kind of hesitant. I probably should have. It's up 50% since then. But, um, but yeah, guys, you have to kind of come up with your strategies, come up with different numbers, do your own kind of price predictions, right? You can base it off of the market cap. Historically, where did that market cap land you? There's a lot, a lot that goes into that, right? And everybody's going to have their own method. But just kind of do that because then based off of what I have currently, I have a goal amount for all the coins together. And a lot of it is in preparation for, to me, what may potentially be the hardest part, which is going to sound silly, but it's the taking profits part, right? That is obviously going to be the best part and why we've done all this stacking. There is a ton that goes into that mentally. You need to really mentally prepare yourself, especially because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when the peak is going to be, how high that peak is going to be, how aggressive that peak is going to be. And this is where you have to have yourself mentally prepared in case you were to sell. Let's say Solana hits my $600 target or $650. And you know what? That's the number I'm good with. We are timeline. It makes sense. We are now October 2025 and we hit 650. I'm going to dump all of it. And then a month later, it goes and has this parabolic run to 1800 a Solana. Theoretic. Don't think it's going to hit that high. Just throwing a crazy number out there to prove a point. 
you have to be ready for that scenario that that is going to happen you're probably not going to nail the top exactly there's a lot of variables there so what's going to kind of help you is setting goal amounts and setting overall amounts that you're going to be content with where you're going to be happy with and then that'll start helping you make exit strategies right which realistically that's probably going to be a whole dedicated video just for that because that's not how i'm going to do it where i'm going to oh i think this is the top according to the four-year cycle october 28th should be the top and i'm going to sell 100 percent of it that's not going to be how i'm going to play it right it's going to be very different and i'm going to probably sell early i'm probably going to get nowhere near the peaks but I'm okay with that, right? I got in early enough with a lot of these where it's going to make sense. I'm going to probably sell in percentages and chunks. I'm going to probably end up with some crypto left over even at the end, right? Because I'm, I'm planning on holding at least some in case we do have that crazy parabolic run for a week at the very, very end of this thing. Which again, we don't know what's going to happen. Could be spring 25, could be after the inauguration, could be the first three months after there, or could be when the strategic reserve actually goes into effect. Could be something else. Could follow the damn cycle. Could go beyond the cycle. This could be the break of the cycle. We don't know, man. There's so many freaking variables. But planning these things, like having allocations, having your set amount, it's going to make the next phase easier, right? A lot of this is specifically... For this next phase which we are now officially almost jumping into right so i'll do another video specifically regarding the way i look at that because again that's going to be a very big thing like your exit strategy it's going to be huge and you got to be mentally prepared for it right it's a lot of things to consider taxes like it's it's a lot of different things guys Anyways, I rambled on long enough, guys. This is the portfolio update, again, for Q3 and Q4, because at this point, again, that hurricane backed us all up with all our videos. But let me know how you guys are playing this. Are you guys this structure? Do you guys have 100 positions? I know some of you guys, I forget who I was talking to the other day, they had they have positions in 65 different coins, over 100 wallets crazy like how <laughs> okay. right and even with me man to me this is consolidating a lot and this is like 20 coins right realistically should maybe consolidate a little bit more but it's just hard right a lot of this it's hard it's for pre preparations but let me know in the comments guys are you guys doing this are you guys setting up your goals are you guys setting up your allocation amounts are you meeting those goals what is your sentiment right now? That's been another big discussion that so many people are not too happy right now. Um, freaking, in case you don't know, if you guys aren't on X, ecstatic, bros. Like, it's we're hitting everything well beyond our targets, which is extremely good. It's crazy, right? You should be super excited. You should be super happy. You should kind of be pretty close to where you want to be at at this point, right? And if you're not, start doing something about it. Right. But again, please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I am out.